freedom. After almost three months in lockdown, camping had finally opened in Ontario. I took full advantage and drove through the wee hours of the night to the southern regions of Tomogamy to take on an epic eight-day solo adventure. There was about eight million mosquitoes at the put-in. I put in at uh, Madamagassi Lake, access point number 26, according to Jeff's map. It took me seven hours, pretty much on the nose, to get here from my place, just outside of Sarnia. And Madamagassi is absolutely like glass right now. I left launch at 8.30. We'll see how long it takes me to go up to the northwest arm of Madamagassi to my first portage. And my plan is to stay on Wolf Lake tonight. The feeling I have right now is, is kind of a mixture of emotions. It's hard to leave my wife and know that I'm not gonna be able to communicate with her for the next eight or nine days. There's a bit of apprehensiveness as I take on this trip solo, having never done a trip this size, apprehensive about the bugs, knowing that the flies and mosquitoes are at their worst pretty much right now. There's nervous excitement, but I'm ready to take on the challenge. Oh, I see a sign on the left here or something. Just over there, so I came up from uh, Madamagassi there, the north arm, I was heading north. I came around here. I first went to the right. It looked like a portage trail there and it was all blown in with deadfall. When you're doing this section, I think that might be the old toenail portage or something. Anyways, that's on the right. This portage that I'm taking is on the left as you're heading north. All right, let's see how this works. The first portage of the trip. A simple but buggy 300 yard stroll through a cedar forest. Now onto the Chinaguchi River. A short 100 yard paddle downstream led me to a 240 meter portage river right known as the Toenail. I had read reports of this portage's beauty and before long, I was in awe. That feels good to get that off my head. I think I'm just gonna drift down Sylvester here. I got a bit of a tailwind, just like I did down on Mount Magassi. Sylvester is a beautiful lake, but uh, it is a fish sanctuary, and it's very difficult to not fish here right now. I'm in the Wolf Lake now. And it's just looking spectacular. It is really a spectacular lake. It's so beautiful. 
cliffs, the trees, calm water. It feels pristine even though I know it's a well-used lake. Right now I don't see another soul. I found a really nice site on the east side of Wolf. When you look at the map, um, at least the Otter Tooth maps, and you look on the east side of Wolf, you'll see that there's two campsites on the east side. This one is the one that's uh, to the south. So I'll take you for a tour. The only thing is it's quite a walk up to the campsite, but that's okay. It's a really nice trail. Good tent pad there. There's a couple good tent pads back there. There's a thunder box back through there, which I already acquainted myself with and woke all the mosquitoes up. But the pace de resistance, fire pit bench. But the beauty is just the view. I'm facing the west right now. My wife would be mad. But you're a good ways up and you got a beautiful view of Wolf Lake. I hope there's going to be a nice sunset tonight because I should be looking right at it. It is a beautiful, beautiful view here. Well, the bugs are relentlessly insane, but this is my uh, setup. It's my little backpacking bug shelter. Give me enough room just to sit down, have a little gas stove, do my cooking in there and maintain my sanity. It's supposed to rain uh, tonight or tomorrow, so I have the tarp set up. And have my tent with uh, the door just under the tarp so that when I get out in the morning I won't be soaking wet. Jeez. So update, I probably look terrible. Because uh, I've probably been bit a thousand times. I feel my uh, the back of my head all swollen up with a bunch of bites from mosquitoes. But it's a beautiful, beautiful evening and it's a beautiful, beautiful lake. Yeah, the bugs are horrendous. Ooh, yeah, they're still following me out, out here. But I was expecting that. I knew it'd be terrible. I just have to deal with it. That's camp behind me. So it is brutally buggy anywhere near shore. Um, my campsite is just brutally buggy. It's not fun hanging out there at all. Even inside the little bug shelter, it's just, it's constant buzzing around you and um, it's just not pleasant. So um, I figured, well, there's probably wind out on the lake and uh, I came out for an evening paddle just to kind of cool down and um, get away from the bugs a bit. And sure enough, the bugs aren't out here at all. And I found this little flat rock island here. So I went back to my campsite and I grabbed my uh, food bag, my stove, my camera bag and uh, my water, everything, and uh, brought it out here. So I'm gonna hang out here, I'm gonna cook my supper here, and uh, I think after that I'll probably do a nice evening paddle right until bedtime. I'm not gonna have a campfire or anything tonight just because it's, it's not gonna be enjoyable with the bugs, so I think I'll stay out here until it's time for bed. It'll be early to bed tonight for sure. And yeah, then I just have to paddle to my campsite and run back up into my tent and go to sleep, so. All right, look at these cliffs. Aren't they something? Solitude, a word that is so often misunderstood. It is common that the word is associated with those rare few that seek to escape society completely and live as total hermits. For me, and I'm sure for many of you, the word solitude has a different meaning. Traveling alone allows me to completely go by my own schedule, not needing to worry about the needs of anyone else. Solitude means peace, quiet, focus. I am not distracted by anyone else, and I am able to fully observe and absorb the absolute pure beauty of what is surrounding me. If you have never traveled alone, why?
I had a good sleep. I went to bed around eight and then um, I woke up around 6.30. I feel like the swelling in my head's kind of gone down, which is good. But uh, the only way I could enjoy a good cup of coffee and breakfast was inside the bug shelter this morning, so I did that. And uh, I'm headed to Chittaguchi Lake today. I'm going to try and find an island site there or a site that's on an exposed point where there's a lot of wind and exposure, you know, because uh, I think it'll keep the bugs down. Anyways. Well, it looks like we're in for some nasty weather. The winds have kicked up. It's gone overcast and it's starting to cool down. I got about uh, almost 16 kilometers to go before I reach the site I want to stay at. So I'm going to put on my rain gear. I'm going to put the waterproof case on just to play it safe. And put some miles on here. Time. A short 160 meter portage started my day, leading me to the south end of picturesque Dudney Lake. The further I headed to the north, the worse the winds became. As I slowly battled my way north, I noticed something on the eastern shore. The old tower man's cabin, still standing from the 1960s. I was very quickly reminded just how many people have paddled this route before me, each carving their own mark into a small piece of history. Well, that was Dudney Lake. I'm at the north end of Dudney. This is the 450 going into Southeast Bay or Southwest Bay, one of the two. Uh, the skies are opening up a bit, so I think the rain is uh, the rain threat is passed. The wind is what's uh, the big thing. It's a north wind, and uh, I have to head north through the bay and through Chinaguchi. So we'll see how far I can make it. So there's an island site in uh, Southeast Bay, and uh, if the winds are too bad. I'm going to just stay there because it looks like it'll be a very exposed site. None of these little buggers flying around, hopefully. So we'll take it as it comes, but we've got a 450 portage to do. Well, I found my island site. I did probably less than half of the kilometers that I wanted to do today. I wanted to get all the way up to the north end of Chinaguchi and I'm still in Southeast Bay. But the paddling has been very, very difficult. Even just coming from, from that point that you see behind me to here, when a gust of wind would kick up, it'll just spin the boat right around and it's very difficult to paddle. So I have no desire to paddle anymore today. The winds are just far too strong. So I'm going to rest here for the day. I've got a nice wind exposed point there that I can have a fire, keep the bugs away. I'm not experiencing bugs here at all. This is a really nice, nice uh, rest for that. There's a nice tent pad back there. There's a really old thunder box that, oh well, it'll do. It's nice to be able to finally sit outside and not worry about mosquitoes.
I have this on because we're gonna go back into the wilderness there and get some firewood for tonight. Let's go get some wood. Feel like a million dollars, I do. <laughs> I got a lake trout offshore. He's squirmy though. I gotta put him on a stringer, keep him in the water, and I might have him for supper. Nice it is to be bug free right now. For the rest of tonight, I'm just gonna chill out, watch the sunset, sit by the fire, sip some of the wine that I brought. That lake trout was delicious. Very, very, very good. I hope to catch more and eat more of those on this trip, absolutely. Breaking camp, I'm on the water by 20 after nine. Into the headwind to take on the challenge. See how far I can go. I have to try. And there are just thousands of flies and mosquitoes all around me. Wild. But I round the corner onto the main part of McConnell and look what I found. A whole big beautiful beach. It seemed like a sin to leave this place. It's so perfect. Woo! Woo! Just a 
a mess. I feel like I've got lots of energy to take on the possible portage from hell. I made it to Laura. Well, hallelujah, it's four o'clock and I reached the south end of Evelyn Lake. Evelyn Lake is beautiful. It is a very, very beautiful lake. Well worth coming here.